Hey, while you in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like and subscribe. The Lord tried to warn us and give us his testimony to show us these several things are going to happen. In the end, you're going to be so destroyed that you're going to look around and it's going to be so much confusion in the world. It's going to be men marrying men and everybody's going to be okay with that. It's going to be people claiming to be you and you're going to be like, yeah, they the people of God. And you're going to be okay with that. Being okay with that is to be at the bottom when we were given a strong inheritance. This inheritance on earth, this is ours. But we don't benefit. Why? Because we destroyed. It's time to wake up out of that destruction. My brother, do you know what it means to stand up for the law? Come talk to me, brother. What's your name? Sarando? Sarando, give me five minutes. Read, let's hear what, we, let's hear what the Lord said real quick, read. Do not prostitute thy, thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. What does that mean? The Lord said, do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. What, what's that saying? No, Sarando, what, what's that saying? You ever read the Bible before? You ever read that? What is he saying? Read it again. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a hoe. Let the land fall into whoredom. What does that mean? Read Psalms 94 and 16. That's the prime example of what's going on with our communities. The Lord said, don't prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. Let the land fall into whoredom. That was a prime example of the land being fallen due to order. Right. The order that exists now is the primary focus on all our young men and sisters' minds. And because of the order, we can't even formulate this process. We can't, through the process of elimination, use logic to see who we bring up. We can't even comprehensively take any form of doctrine and break it down to as minuscule to right, understand baby. what's being stated to us. How you doing, my brother? I got a question for you real quick. The Lord said this, read. What does this mean? Who will rise up for me against the evildoer? The Lord said, who will rise up for him against the evildoer? What is that saying? My brother, you look like you box. You box, don't you? Uh, nah, you don't box. Your box? What does the Lord say right here? What is this saying? Who will rise up for me against the evildoer? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? What's that mean? Read it again. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? The Lord said, who's going to rise up for me? First and foremost, let's break that down. He has to ask a question. This is the Lord. This is our God. Through the spirit of the, the prophet, through the spirit of the Lord asking you, asking me, and asking the men that wrote this, who's going to stand up for the Lord? Why does that question have to be posed? Why do we have to ask, is anybody going to stand up for the Lord? It should be automatic. Why is it not automatic? Why is it, how come you don't see 5,500 of us on this corner shutting the Sabbath down? Because everybody's faith is in Right. Why is that? What happened? Yeah. Something happened. Yeah, In that flyer, we got some information to show you why that happened. To show you why the Lord had to ask who's going to stand up for him against the workers of iniquity. Iniquity is simply sin. Do you know what sin is? Yeah. Not, what not what the, sin? Not the, it's not like the, the, the beats of it. Because like I say, I'm, I pay attention to it, but I don't I don't study it like I suppose. Okay, but what's sin though? Sin, um, um, to me, it's um, evil that's done in the world. What's this? I mean, who is that? This guy? They claim that she. I like how you said they claim. That, yeah. Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
they do, they do claim that that's Jesus. But that's a man named Caesar Borgia, right? He's a real man that walked the earth. He was given the life of Christ. Christ more so, according to the scriptures, looked like this. Now, this right here is one of the reasons why the question has to be asked. Who's going to rise up for me? Because we were destroyed. We were destroyed because of sin. Sin destroyed us. And today we continue to sin by even acknowledging this as our Lord and Savior. You understand that? The Lord gave us warning in 2 Corinthians 11 and 4. If you can read that real quick and then we'll go back to what you were holding. 11 and 4. The Lord warned us. He said, be cautious. Watch out. Because there's going to be many men coming in this earth to deceive you. Right? Read. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 4. For if, for if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus. Another who? Another Jesus. You hear that? We got two images of Jesus that were depicted in the earth. Which is the right one that you should be following? The Lord tried to warn us and give us his testimony to show us these several things are going to happen. In the end, you're going to be so destroyed that you're going to look around and it's going to be so much confusion in the world. It's going to be men marrying men, and everybody's going to be okay with that. It's going to be people claiming to be you, and you're going to be like, yeah, they the people of God. And you're going to be okay with that. Being okay with that is to be at the bottom, when we were given a strong inheritance. This inheritance on earth, this is ours. But we don't benefit. Why? Because we destroyed. It's time to wake up out of that destruction. You say you study a little bit. Let's continue to study. Do you want to continue to study and learn the truth I, about I, what happened? Yeah, I do. You do? I have a mom. My mom is very big. That's good. That's good. Mom, your mom, mom studies the Bible? Yeah, yeah. She knows she's an Israelite? She, uh, she's um, actually, um, she's like very involved in her church. Like, good, good. What church she go to? She goes to the church that's actually bringing the Holy Spirit's prayer. What Jesus do they teach? They teach? Yeah. So, like, the, see, the thing is, the church that... One thing my mom always explained to me growing up is they never said that Jesus was one. Okay. No, they said but their doctrine they, will let you know that yeah, they kind of lean on Christ. Do they teach you that you come from the bloodline of Jesus? Yeah. And your does. mom teaches you that. My mom does. You know what you're supposed to do if your mom is actually learning the, the truth of the scriptures? How you doing, my brother? Give me Deuteronomy uh, 6. This is what she's supposed to be doing. Because your mom is heavily involved in the church, but we identified the church as being one of the main culprits of pushing the issue of ignorance to our people. You understand that? The church teaches two men can marry. Does the Bible teach that? That's another issue. That's another problem. That's why I asked you in the beginning when I read that scripture to you, who will rise up for me? That's some self-studying that you got to do. You gotta rise up for the Lord. You gotta read. Let's read that. Six, is it four? Deuteronomy chapter six, verse seven. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk with them of them when thou sittest in thy house. You hear that? What's being stated stay here is Moses is telling the children of Israel, you gotta teach your children the laws. Remember. There's a saying in the Bible that says, raise up a child in the way he should go, and when he's older, he should what? Not soon depart. So you got to train them up as children, right? Whenever you learn the truth of God, it got to be taught to you. So what I'm trying to show you is the church is dropping the ball somewhere with your mom. Because there's some things if your mom is heavily involved, that you should know. What's today? If your mom's heavily involved in the church, like we're heavily involved in the Bible, doing what God wants, we know what today is. The, so she didn't teach you that. How long she been heavily involved? That's that's cool. That's cool. That's understood. I understand that. But have she ever told you what today is? You you paying attention now, and I, and I, I can honor that, right? I can honor that. What you say your name was? Isaiah. 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 I'm yoking on. All right. This is Yahweh Shah. That's Mordecai. What we want to do is we want to reveal some things to you that may not have been revealed to you before. I'm not attacking mom. I'm attacking Christianity. All right? Attacking Christianity. And I'm trying to expose that they not 
who they say they are. They say they with bringing the community together and teaching God that he's not teaching God. You also teach God with teaching this. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 8. Bring it out. Remember the Sabbath day. You hear that? You have to remember the Sabbath day. Why would we have to remember the Sabbath day? Look at the front of that flyer. This is why we have to remember the Sabbath day. Slavery happened to your people. The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians have been indoctrinated. They have been enslaved. They have been colonized. Lands taken away from them. Right? All these things happen to us. Our tongue that we spoke has been ripped from our understanding. The knowledge that we have of who we are as a people have been taken away from us. How to actually serve the Lord our God, that understanding was taken away took from us and we were given white man's religion. Christianity is white man's religion. Do you believe that? Yep, you can attest to that. We've been given these things. The Lord said, remember the Sabbath day. Read. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. To do what? To keep it holy. And this is how we keep the Sabbath day holy. We honor and worship him on this day, on the Lord's day. One of the things we do is go out and we teach our people who they are. We have an establishment for them to come back to. Once they understand that, they must keep these laws. So after this, we go and we fellowship. And we learn from our health. Right? That's one of the ways we keep the Sabbath holy. How else do we keep the Sabbath holy? Six days start the labor. You hear that? Six days you're going to labor. Because if a man don't work, he don't eat. So you got to work. And he says you have six days to do it. What's the first day of the week? Sunday. So from Sunday to Friday, you got all them days. So get money. Three. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work. You hear that? So six days, we should be laboring. Today is the seventh day on the Sabbath day. Should these stores be open? According to the law of God, he says six days shall you get money. Right? Should these supposed to be open? Technically, no. Absolutely right. Smart. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou know thy son, know thy daughter, know thy maid servant, know thy maid servant, know thy cattle, know thy stranger that is within thee, within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in it, in them is. That's it? Yes. Let's go with some other things that we can't do on the Sabbath. We actually 35. So the Lord said, you're not supposed to be working. You, your business, anybody that works for you, your children, right? He said, your cattle. So today that'll be something like, something we put on automatic pay, right? Like maybe if we got a storefront online. He said, all they got to get shut down today. On the Sabbath day. Three. Exodus chapter 35 verse 3. He shall kill the no fire through, up, through your habitations. Upon the Sabbath day. He shall kill no fire. You hear that? The Lord said, don't kindle fire. Why? Because you're not supposed to be cooking. What's that? Uh, 12? 12? You're not supposed to be 12? 16. 16? Okay. You're not supposed to cook on the seventh day. He said, don't even fix it in your mind to turn the fire on. Turning the fire on to do what? Go and cook. So cooking and doing what? Making money on this day shouldn't be a thing that we're doing. Once we realize that, we come closer to God. And that's a small thing to do. The Lord said, if you can't do these small things, you definitely ain't gonna be able to tackle the big things. Right. Tackle the big things like standing on the drug, dealing in the face, and telling them, look, what you're doing is wrong. Tell a whoremonger, listen, what you're doing is wrong. That's not what we're supposed to do as men. As men, we're supposed to raise our children. Marry the one, one woman that we have made a commitment to. Marry her. We're not supposed to be sleeping around, right? And the only way you can do that is if you remove that from your life. Damn, we wasn't raised like this. We came to this understanding, and then we was like, we can't be whoremongers. We can't sleep around. All right, I'm going to stop that. Right. Because I want better. I want to prove to the Lord that he did right in choosing me and waking me up. You understand that? We special, bro. This earth is ours, but we've been made to believe that there's no benefit in being a home. We want somebody else to handle the problems of the world. No, it's our responsibility to handle the problems of the world. That's right. Right? Read. 
the book. Exodus chapter 16 verse 23. And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord had said. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath. Let me read this and give you one more scripture then I'll let you go. Cool? All right, go ahead. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which he will bake today and see that you will see and that which remaineth keep overlaid upon us for you to be kept. So what this is saying is don't cook on the Sabbath day. On the Sabbath day we don't light a fire to cook any food. Right? Give our body a rest from eating hot processed food for a day at least. We can eat cold cuts, salads, something that you don't have to cook. Or if you cooked it the day before, eat the leftovers. That's what the Lord telling you to do. All right? These are commandments. Once you start moving like this, you can start keeping other commandments. No nation runs with chaos and disorder. As chaotic and disorder as this place looks, there's order in the back end to make it work the way it's working. To make the killings happen the way the killings happen. And there's an order set down so that the killings and the chaos continue. So that the sons and daughters of the true God, you so-called blacks, Spanish, and Native Indians, so that they stay in sin and stay on the bottom, there's order to keep this chaos the way that it's set forth. You understand that? To keep us in sin, we stay on the bottom and we stay away from our God. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Family.